This is Dave Quatella. Welcome to another edition of the Power Collective. Here on the Power Collective, uh, we interview and grab insights from some of Seaman's EP's best and brightest. And uh, today's no exception. Today we have uh, Scott McClellan on the line here today. And we're going to be talking with him about elevator switches, which is a really cool, uh, innovative product that Siemens EP has. Uh, as always, I'm with my partner in crime, uh, Mr. Chris Jenks, Dr. J. Chris, say hello. Hello, David. Hey, Chris. Uh, Scott, welcome to the Power Collective. How are we doing on this fine day? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So, you know, let's just jump right in. I know you've got a lot of good information to cover. Let's do it. So I have a brief presentation today. I'm going to uh, talk about the control switch, uh, why we need an elevator control switch, mention some features and benefits, and then talk about how to configure this product. So why is there a need for an elevator control switch? The Siemens elevator control switch is a simple all-in-one solution that takes the mystery out of many codes associated with fire protection and safety in elevator shafts. The national codes prescribe the requirements for sprinklers, elevators, uh, and electrical equipment. These are NFPA 70, NFPA 72, ANSI, ASME, a17.1 and NFPA 13. The elevator control switch has a system that includes a shunt trip, fuses, and a communication method with the fire alarm control panel. So it's really three systems in one. So here's a diagram that shows a, uh, a typical layout of an elevator shaft and where the components would be within that shaft. And what I'd like to do is talk about how the different components communicate with each other and the order in which this switch operates. So the first thing that's going to happen during a fire event is the fire, a fire detection device like a smoke detector will send a signal to the fire alarm control panel. Next, that fire alarm control panel will then trigger the fire alarm, contact the fire department, and return the elevator to the ground floor. Once the elevator reaches the ground floor, the doors will open and allow passengers to depart. Uh, after a certain time, the power will then turn off to the elevator via the shunt trip on the elevator control switch. Lastly, once the comp there's confirmation that there's no power to the elevator, the fire alarm panel will then send a signal to the sprinkler system to turn on to extinguish the fire. Hey, Scott, uh, quick question here. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I love the application use case here for the elevator control switch. Um, are there any other applications where this particular switch could be used or is it solely just for elevator control? Yeah, good, good question, Dave. Uh, you can use the elevator control switch for any application. Uh, if you need uh, the ability to remotely disconnect uh, power, you can use that via the shunt trip. And then also uh, you can integrate any type of communication into that switch that just like uh, the sequence I went over um, could have some logic built in in order to uh, operate or know when to operate the switch. Great. That's very helpful. Thank you. So next, I just wanted to point out the components inside of the elevator switch and then talk about the features. So uh, as you see to the right on your screen, there's uh, the top right, really the largest component in the switch is the molded case switch. This contains the shunt trip and so it's the means of the disconnect for the switch. Directly below that is the uh, mounting base for the fuses. Towards the top left, you see a, a bundle of terminal blocks. So this is where the external wiring is going to, to, to terminate to. Below those terminal blocks are the two relays. And below that is the control transformer that's, uh, that takes whatever the power voltage is and then produces 120 volts for, to operate the shunt. So some features about the switch. Uh, the switch covers amperages 30 amps, 60 amps, 100 and 200 amps, uh, is rated 
for uh, 200KA for short circuit when using J-class fuses. As I mentioned, it contains a shunt trip in the molded case switch. There's a key to test feature. So you can test the shunt trip when you're at the switch. You don't have to remotely in initiate the test. Uh, also, there is a defeatable door lock. The enclosures available are NEMA 1, 3R, 12, and 4. The MCS contains an auxiliary control switch. However, you can add an additional one to give you two total auxiliary control switches. The switch is UL98 listed and has also been seismic qualified. So what are the, some of the benefits of the switch? Well, the switch being a three-in-one system that uh, allows the builder or contractors to meet uh, multiple different codes, uh, it's, it, it's easy for everybody from the consulting engineer to put into the spec to the installer uh, and even the inspector. You just have one component here that satisfies all those needs. So it's, it, it makes everybody's life a little bit easier. Because everything's contained uh, in the, the box, there's no need to add additional components. So you, the individual or the con contractor is going to source this box and install it, uh, terminate some wires to it, and that's, that's all they have to do. The elevator control switch is highly configurable, so it will meet all different types of uh, applications. Scott, question. Looks like sure. some of the components in this uh, assembly are not Siemens. Could you comment on that? So this is a brand label product for us. Uh, however, all the uh, pre-sales support, sales and then post-sales support uh, is provided by Siemens. A, as a contractor, as an engineer, uh, we can support this from start to finish. You don't need to involve anybody else. So how do you configure a switch? How do you uh, know what catalog number to create in order to order a switch? Well, there's two ways. We have a built-in configurator in Compass. Uh, and then also you can uh, use the configuration table in the speed facts or the product guide to uh, derive the catalog number. So in Compass, to get to the configurator, it's the same configurator that we use for our safety switches, or you could also, it's the same for power panels. When you're in a project, you click on the add product button, go down, select safety switch, and then within the safety switch module, uh, you'll see right there, uh, there's a drop down, and you'll want to select the elevator control option. Hey, Scott, uh, the configuration seems pretty straightforward and, and simple here uh, through Compass Go. Are any of the configuration selections optional, or are they all pretty black and white? Very, very good question. So the configurations, uh, uh, standard things like voltage, amperage, mm -hmm. This is non-optional, you have to select that. Uh, however, there are a few items that are optional. You can include them and, or you don't have to. And uh, that actually leads me to my next slide where okay. I just want to go over this catalog number and uh, point out specifically what are the items that are optional and also talk about a couple of tricks or um, items that I get common question. Both the amperage and the voltage, this is pretty straightforward. Any switch that you're going to build or select, you're going to have to uh, pick those. So the that takes the, the first two uh, characters on the uh, catalog number. And then that third item there is the fire safety interface relay. This is important. I get some questions on this. The most common selection here is the R1. Uh, this means that the switch will actually use the control power uh, from uh, that's created from the control uh, transformer in the switch uh, for signaling. If you select an R2 here, uh, this sets up the relay for, or selects the relay for 24 volt DC and external power at that, that 24 volt DC is going to be ha is going to have to be supplied externally. So you're going to need to know that and understand uh, what power you're supplying from the fire alarm control panel if you want to use that 24 volt coil option. The next on there is the pilot light and this is not optional. You have to select a color green, red, or white. 
and then uh, I want to spend a little more time on the following option, and that's the fire alarm voltage monitoring relay. One trick here is if you are supplying the 24 volt DC from ex uh, external the switch, then you must select the F1 option here, the single pole relay. If you select R1 uh, for the 120 volt coil on the fire safety interface relay, you can select either F1 or F3 here. I will note that F3 is the more common. The last three options down here in the catalog number configuration, these can all be blank. And so I kind of keep these in their, their own separate uh, uh, group. So the enclosure, as I mentioned before, you can have a NEMA 1, 3R12, or 4 enclosure. However, the NEMA 1 is the most common. And if you want to select a NEMA 1, you do not put a character in here. You just leave it blank. So blank means uh, NEMA 1. Below that, or the, the, the next item there, is the neutral lug. So the switch does not come with a neutral lug. If you want to add one, you just need to put an N into the catalog number. Um, again, you can leave this blank if, you're, if you do not need to add one. And lastly, the additional auxiliary contact. So remember, we have one auxiliary contact included. Uh, this is the second auxiliary contact. This is an optional item as well. If you want the additional contact, Put a B in the catalog number. If not, leave it blank. Hey, Scott, great stuff. Great information on the elevated control switch. Uh, I think the audience is really going to uh, appreciate all, all the work you've put into this. Chris, do you have uh, any other questions for Scott at this time? Well, I, I noticed that the panel builders are making a UL508 version. Can you, uh, can you comment on how this might be different, Scott? Sure, good question. I would advise uh, contractors and consulting engineers that a 508 version of the elevator switch uh, does not is not tested and does not meet the UL 98 requirements uh, like uh, the Siemens elevator control switch. Uh, also, many times they have not been tested or meet seismic requirements as well. So, uh, so, so be careful out there. Um, I think uh, as a consulting engineer, you I would recommend specking in a UL 98 switch. Cool, thank you. Yeah, that, no, that's really good information to have. Appreciate that. Uh, and then lastly, Scott, for me, what's the lead time on uh, on the elevator control switch as it stands today? Yeah, good question. So this is a make to order switch. That, as I said, it's highly configurable. You saw all the different uh, options. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a five to six week lead time. Great, thank you. So I guess just to summarize here, guys, really interesting product you know it, it's labeled as an elevator control switch but it it's just not for that particular application it can be used for multiple applications it satisfies a lot of needs due to the three-in-one approach uh, helping to meet multiple different codes that are out there that need to be met so again that's great it has kind of that blanket approach from a features and benefits side the quick installation that you talked about i think is really going to help out our installers our end users to save them time and money on a job site which is you know at the at the heart of what we're trying to do here from an innovative uh, standpoint and then lastly it's easy to configure you know you kind of went through it there in compass you have uh, multiple options to choose from but overall the configuration is is pretty simple uh, to use overall i think this is a great product great solution i think uh, the audience is really going to appreciate it any final thoughts from you uh, scott as product manager for the elevator control switch no i think i uh, said everything i needed to thanks for uh, allowing me to share Awesome. Well, again, that, that's the point of the Power Collective here is to grab insights and uh, knowledge from, from those that are doing it day in and day out and provide it to the industry and to our audience. So, Chris, thank you again for being uh, my partner here on, on this edition of the Power Collective. And Scott, uh, nice talking with you again. Take care. See you guys. See you. Bye.